Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Poor. I'm a marketing manager for the Jones and Bartlett Learning Public Safety Group. Thank you for joining us today on this webinar on Nancy Caroline's Emergency Care in the Streets, ninth edition. I would turn my webcam on, but unfortunately, I'm having some difficulties with that. But uh, we're lucky to have with us today two of our lead authors slash editors, Bob Elling and Dr. Alfonso Mejia. So they're going to be taking you through a big walkthrough of what's their backgrounds, history of the text, and then going into what's new with the textbook, as you'll see here. And then uh, at the end, we will also do a quick summary of uh, some of the online Navigate packages available with the new ninth edition. So without further ado, I'll pass it on to Dr. Mejia to walk through his background. I am a hand surgeon, uh, the program director of the orthopedic surgery residency program at the University of Illinois. Uh, which I've been since 2007. I'm also the vice head of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery, which I've been since 2009. I'm uh, the medical director and tactical emergency medical support physician for the South Suburb Emergency Response Team. That's a multi-jurisdictional SWAT team. I'm a foreign police officer. I've worked with them since February of 2000, so I'm approaching my 23rd year with them. And we have a, a non-transport MOU with IDPH as far as our medical care. Hi, I'm, I'm Bob Elling, and basically uh, my background has included four and a half decades uh, practicing in the field as a paramedic, as an EMS instructor, as an EMS administrator. Uh, I've been involved in publishing for pretty much that duration of time, and uh, certainly advocating to straighten, strengthen the links of the chain of survival. So, welcome. Barbara Elhert is another one of our lead editors. She's a president of Southwest EMS Education. She does pre nursing educator for the, more, the past 25 years. She's the former director of field training for Southwest Ambulance in Mesa, Arizona. And she worked as an EMS coordinator for the city of Mesa, Arizona Fire Department. She's a former chair of the American Safety and Health Institute ACLS Committee. And it's currently a full-time author and part-time educator in rural Texas. And before we continue, I just wanted to let uh, all our attendees know, um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the questions box on the GoToWebinar panel. Uh, we will also have time at the end of this presentation for open Q&A. So you'll either be able to unmute yourself at the end and ask questions, or if you want to put them in the box, we'll keep an eye on that too. So Nancy Caroline was, has been affectionately known as the mother of paramedicine or paramedics. She had a very strong social conscience and was devoted, devoted her life to medicine, teaching, and her patients. She also had a superb sense of humor. Back in 1978, when I received my paramedic training at Einstein in, uh, as they would say, the Dub Bronx, there were no paramedic books. Dr. Jacobson, who taught the program, basically was a friend of Nancy Caroline's. So we, we ended up using Xeroxes of, of the copies of her draft curriculum, which ultimately became the first version of this textbook. So I was fortunate to meet her while uh, she was touring New York City EMS system, and she stopped by to visit the Bellevue Medics. And that was the first time I got to meet her many, many years ago. So. So the streets textbook certainly is the one that was developed by Dr. Caroline in the 70s. Emergency care in the streets basically transformed paramedic education and it's in a world-class medical content, accessible language, and clear, with a clear approach to patient assessment. You can still find the social media comments and stuff about the, the cartoons that were used in the earlier versions of the textbook, and we've kept those in the workbook. One of the things I always, I always like to brag about is that this textbook was developed by a whole team of very, very experienced people, not just the authors, the, the publishing teams, all of the people who touched this book have a lot of experience. So. Nancy was a lifelong friend of Mike Smith's. Uh, many of you probably know Mike Smith from many, many years ago. And after she died of cancer, the rights for the book uh, were obtained by uh, Jones and Bartlett. It was agreed by her family that uh, Mike Smith and, and Bob Elling would be involved in the future editions of the textbook. 
since Mike died in 2013, uh, I kind of feel a responsibility for keeping Nancy's voice in the most current versions of the textbook. So many of her tips and advice and to the street paramedics and still are still very good lessons here today. So as I say, the, we kept the cartoons, they're in the workbook. So. Of course, the, uh, um, when you revise a textbook, you got to revise, you got to keep in mind the guiding documents. We've, uh, you know, we've followed latest versions of uh, the um, CPR guidelines, uh, the International Liaison Council on Resuscitation, that their standard both for ECC and for first aid guidelines, American Heart Association's uh, versions of those, the National EMS Scope of Practice Model, the EMS Standards, there were field triage decision schemes, and uh, we tried to keep all the information at the cutting edge of evidence-based content, medi very medically reviewed, very close oversight by the AAS team. So at a high level, what's new in uh, the ninth edition, well, so we have, uh, we have street smart, smarts boxes that are emphasizing some of the soft skills that we might not have emphasized in the past and that are very important today. Uh, all the images have been updated. Uh, we have to reflect the common, cur uh, common practice. And, you know, as you know, the pandemic certainly implications on the way we practice and that's in the book and in our photos and we've added emphasis on uh, current spinal motion restriction which that you know has evolved over the last uh, couple of editions we've reviewed and updated the references the statistics and the case studies and cpr and acls were updated and using the uh, most current versions of algorithms and uh, the language also has been uh, updated to ensure gen gender neutrality, racial inclusivity, and uh, non-stigmatizing descriptions of patient conditions. So the first section of the book has seven chapters in it. And um, the, the preparatory, we kept the same format, the preparatory section, some of the, the uh, changes that occur in there is recognition of EMS personnel licensure, Interstate uh, Compact is discussed, uh, NREMT's uh, National EMS ID number, numbering system is discussed. We updated PPE discussion, particularly aerosol generating procedures. We updated uh, public health statistics and implications of the pandemic. We've updated the emotional well being sections and in particular signs and, uh, of compassion fatigue and using peer support and, and CS, CISD. And then there's uh, tips for conducting sensitive and effective patient interview. That's all in, all in the first, the preparatory sections. Also in the preparatory section, conditions for uh, reimbursement through uh, Medicare and transport is addressed. Tips for to ensure documentation does the that's does the OES not yeah. expose the provider or agency, and thoroughly updated lists of terms and abbreviations that should and should not be used by paramedics. The second uh, section of the book basically has three chapters in it. And uh, in the human body and human system section. We've improved the uh, descriptions of fluid and acid-base balance, updated statistics and disease of disease prevalence. There's tips to ensure sensitivity, sen sensitive care is appropriate in each person's stage of life. And the third section is patient assessment. In the patient assessment, there's some revised wording throughout to enhance cultural sensitivity and racial inclusivity, such as taking baseline skin color into consideration when assessing a patient's appearance. The use of the, of the term diagnosis as it applies to the paramedic's role. We've increased the focus on paramedic's responsibility to be knowledgeable, 
member of the healthcare community, staying current in EMS research and understanding availability of local resources. And then there's pharmacology, and pharmacology has three chapters in it. This includes a change, and that is that in the past editions, the formulary was at the back of the book, and we pulled the formulary back into the new chapter, Emergency Medicines, because it makes more sense to have it there. We revised the discussion of pharmacodynamics to improve uh, reader comprehension and avoid duplication with chapter 15. So, so by having it all in the same section, we don't need to cover the same material twice and stand a chance that we're gonna not say the same thing. So we updated the crystalloid uh, solution for fluid replacement to current recommendations. We expanded the discussion of selecting and safely using syringes and needles. And we've improved the illustrations of needle insertion for parental roots. So, and as I said, the emergency medicines section has been updated and added to section four, the pharmacology section of the text. I had to unmute myself. So section five is airway management. It's one chapter. It expanded the discussion of entitled CO2 assessment. It includes tips for avoiding disease transmission during airway management. It's so important right now as we have this ongoing pandemic. Expanded discussion on automatic transport ventilators. Revised description of rapid sequence intubation, uh, including the importance that this is really a resource intense as far as individuals and work collaboratively. Tips to help ensure correct ET2 placement. Updated resuscitation guidelines to align with the 2020 Alcor updates. Medical is quite a few sections, ch chapter 17 through uh, 29. A few of the updates are updated discussion of pathophysiology and management of common respiratory conditions. Several cardiovascular conditions, common EMP conditions, cirrhosis, uh, lupus, and scleroderma. Updated discussion of managing adult cardiac arrest. Inclusions of the current American Heart Association treatment algorithms. Expanded discussion of ventricular assist devices. Updates on stroke management guidelines and discussion of large vessel occlusion. Includes uh, Miami Emergency Neurologic Deficit uh, Pre-Hospital Checklist. Update discussion of seizure classification and management, tips for gathering patient history relating to GI emergencies, uh, expanded discussion of home hemodialysis, improved description of findings associated with common blood disorders, revised discussion of airborne respiratory transmission and precautions paramedics should be taking, and update discussion of the dangers posed by opioids and management of overdoses. It also includes updated disease prevalence statistics, tips to avoid stigmatizing language, and you can see that that's embedded throughout the entire text. Expanded discussions of recognizing and managing exposures to hazardous gases. Expanded discussion of excited delirium and tips to provide care that is safe for the patient and provider, and guidance for providing care to patient experiencing PTSD. The next section is trauma. Uh, that includes chapters 30 through 39. This had uh, updates that takes us to on the prevalence of common traumatic injuries, field triage decision scheme updated by the American College of Surgeons in 2022 to uh, try to target people being transported appropriately and uh, uh, under transported or to the uh, inappropriate place. X, A, B, C, D, and mnemonic to prioritize control of heavy external bleeding um, when you have extreme external bleeding. Discussion on how spinal motion restriction as opposed to immobilization represents a goal-oriented approach to improve patient safety. A brief description of increasing use of ultrasonography. Expanded coverage of importance of regulating body temperature and fluid levels. And updated procedures for managing heat-related emergencies, including the current American Heart Association guidelines. The next section is the shock and resuscitation section uh, similar to the last edition of the textbook. The items that were updated in there uh, include the management of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest in line with the uh, 2020 guidelines, updated infant compression, 
using the two thumb encircling technique. Uh, we updated the adult post-cardiac arrest care, and we updated explanation of pathophysiology of poor perfusion. And then the section nine of special patient populations that has um, three, five, five chapters in it. Updates to that section of the book included discussion of substance use disorders in pregnancy, updated the uh, AHA guidelines for cardiac arrest in pregnancy, pediatrics, and neonatal care, revised the discussion of pathophysiology and management of complications related to pregnancy, and updated neonatal resuscitation pyramid, and then updated review of pharmacological considerations in the newborn and the pediatric. We also, there was also discussion of the growth of older adult population and services required for healthcare community, the discussion of the effects of poverty on patients and the healthcare system in general, including healthcare disparities. And there's tips for providing sensitive, patient-focused care to populations with special needs. Section 10 of the book is the operations section, and uh, the chapters remain the same as in the previous, previous edition. Updates included new description of specialized transport vehicles, all right, specialty stroke units, for as an example, um, updated review of FEMA's uh, and NIMS, uh, NFPA 3000 standard of active shooter hostile event response program, discussion of types of uh, hazmat decon and uh, OSHA terminology. It was update review of the chemical agents that may be used by terrorist uh, individuals or groups. Uh, update discussion of types of disasters EMS providers may encounter, the PPE and procedures to respond to active shooter incidents, and recognizing and reporting human trafficking are all addressed within this section of the book. The last section of the book, section 11 on career development, we started that in the last edition and we, it, is, it will be included in this edition. The only thing that we're, we are going to do, we, wanna, we expanded it a little bit, and that will be um, online content. So it'll be easily accessible to somebody who's obtained the book and they can go and get a lot of information about uh, expanded choices of uh, careers for paramedics. And we've also included some tips from experienced providers that have uh, contributed significantly to the field of EMS over their career. Cool. All right, thanks to you both. Um, so before we hop into open Q&A, our Director of Product Management, Laura Carney, is going to take you through a quick walkthrough of the Navigate packages available with the ninth edition. Thanks, Ryan. To help support your instructional needs, we've developed four innovative package offerings. These packages include helpful student resources that cater to a variety of learning style and needs, as well as a range of instructional and assessment resources to simplify course delivery. Our package offerings include the following. Essentials, Advantage, Premier, and Flipped Classroom. The Essential Package includes high quality materials to meet core content and instruction needs. The Advantage Package includes foundational resources that prepare students for the National Registry exam and working in the field. The Premier Traditional Classroom Package is a comprehensive education solution that facilitates student engagement in virtual learning. The Premier Flipped Classroom Package includes an integrated suite of resources that transform the hybrid classroom into an active learning environment where students interact with educational content outside of the classroom to develop foundational knowledge. Class time is then devoted to more hands-on active learning. For anyone who's interested, we're happy to provide additional details on the resources found within each package in order to help you determine which offering best fits the need of you and your students. 
Our instructor guide also provides in-depth details on the numerous resources that we offer throughout each package. Please note that we have streamlined our offerings for the ninth edition and no longer offer the preferred package. For the ninth edition, there was a heavy focus on continuing to support you and your students through new and robust resources. I'd like to highlight some of these new resources that are now included in our packages. New videos, including four new skill videos. For Advantage, Premier, and Flipped Classroom, we now include a first responder support and resilience course, as well as soft skill simulations. These can be found within the simulations placard on Navigate. This top 50 scenarios are now included in Essentials, Advantage, and Premier packages. For the flip package, students should reference the challenge scenarios. Interactive lectures have been enhanced with new media, including videos. Questions previously located within the ebook quiz are now located within the test bank, providing you with more flexibility in assessing students. And test prep has been thoroughly updated, featuring many new assessments and improved rationales. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna open it up for q and A. I I do know we have a question in the question box that I'll read out in a moment, but let me just uh, get everyone unmuted here. All right, so you should have the ability to unmute yourself if you wanna ask a question. Um, before we do that though, I do know there's a question in here. Does this program address preferred pronoun and approach to transgender patients to include documentation? So we, we have uh, discussed that numerous times in the, in the book, but it is, it is brought up and, uh, you know, it's basically comes right out and says, you know, you, you treat the people the way they want to be treated. Um, you know, if they prefer a certain pronoun, that's fine. You know, that's respectful. Yeah, if I recall, I, the discussion was basically um, that it, it's we're, we're interacting with an entire world of, of individuals, and um, some individuals, uh, especially you know perhaps older individuals, might, might be put off by the question, and that we would try to approach people as far as if if the situation allows asking them how they prefer to be addressed. Um, and that's the, the, the most open way because then it gives all the power to the patient. Um, it doesn't have any uh, biases on our part. We just ask them how they would prefer to be addressed when the time uh, is possible to allow that. Awesome. Thank you both for answering that. Um, so if anyone wants to ask questions, you can unmute yourself and speak up or you can also type them into the questions box and I can uh, read them off for everyone on our panel. Oh, there's actually a lot more in the question box <laughs> now that I look at it. Um, so question from Eric Harper, do you still have the same amount of medications as last edition? So the, the, the medications chapter, um, or previously the formulary, now a chapter. Uh, the the number of medicines. So I I can't give you the number off the top of my head, but what I can what I can say is, it's it's fairly close to the last edition. We didn't add. It's not like we added another fifty, but um, there were basically when you review what's being used. There were a few few less things being used and a few more things being used. So we're we're fairly close to the uh, the number of medications that were used in the past. Um, and then there's uh, obviously there's extensive lists of medic medications that are not really carried by paramedics, but uh, paramedics should be um, have a, an awareness of what type of medicine it is and and why a patient might be taking those medicines. But of course that list changes constantly so right thank you we we just were we're very happy with the amount of medications that you guys had, had put into the textbook and we also like that you did have just common everyday meds that we may not carry in the pre-hospital setting but paramedics need to know about yeah great 
that we pretty pretty much stuck with that uh, that format. So. Ah, good, good, very good, excellent. Thank you. So we've got a question here from Jeremy Lane. You noted the inclusion of ultrasonography in the trauma chapter. To what extent is ultrasound discussed, i.e., fast exam, a pneumothorax identification, etc.? So if I recall correctly, I mean, all those things are discussed, but it's more on an awareness level than as a skills level, because you know, ultrasound is so um, basically hands-on operator dependent. I think we discussed it as these are things that are being used. These are things that are being used increasingly more and people may obtain training, but Bob, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that that was the thrust of it. Yes. Yeah, definitely. It's just uh, an awareness. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, things change all the time. I, you know, I, I saw on a website, there's a truck doing ECMO now, but man, next edition, we'll have to uh, hit that on an awareness level. All right. So next thank, thank you for that answer, gentlemen. I, I'm just curious, and uh, as this is a, a rapidly developing, uh, you know, thing coming to the EMS world around the country, and and you know, something that we're certainly needing to address during paramedic programs, uh, you know, on a more extensive basis, especially in the area we operate in. So uh, that was that was the heart of my question. So thank you. So I, I believe also, if I, uh, and again, it's been a little bit. So, so uh, but my impression is that. In that discussion of awareness, we, I, I believe there's also uh, at least a couple of references uh, about it so people could dive deeper if they chose to. Uh, very, very good, Doc, thanks very much. Awesome, so the next question here, and um, we do have several members from our PSG product and content team, so maybe they can also chime in for this one, but it's a, uh, what is the most effective way to provide the authors with feedback for future editions? Cash prizes, I think, isn't it? Isn't that the way? <laughs> well, you know, um, I certainly don't have, I get emails all the time from people that uh, have comments and, and uh, you know, occasionally uh, you misspell a word or, um, you know, a book a book that's over 3,000 pages, you might uh, put a comma or a period in the wrong spot. But um, but then, uh, you know, sometimes I, I'll, I'll get emails from people that will say, hey, listen, you know, uh, we have a large number of patients that have a certain type of cancer in our area. And, and uh, we thought maybe this is something that maybe paramedics ought to be well aware of and all that. And uh, you know we keep we keep track of all those emails, and when it comes time to do the next edition, uh, uh, obviously we, we do a, a lot of surveying. Um, but at the same time, that uh, folder comes out, and uh, those are all things that are considered for uh, revisions of the chapters, and when we plan out the next edition. So, thank you, so Bob. I, I don't know what the. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Yeah. No, I think that the, the others on the panel will be the best as far as how to get information. But I would, would say we would welcome any comments uh, or questions there are. And we have tried to incorporate those in this edition with the last edition, including um, we went over uh, the trauma section as far as simplifying transportation guidelines uh, and specifying where what type of hospital to go to. And that was in part from feedback from people reading the book. So any feedback is really welcome because it can help us improve the next edition. Yes, and this is Laura Carney from PSG Learning. I'd also like to share that, you know, we're always interested in receiving the feedback that you have on any of our products. Um, Brian, perhaps you could share my email address. Um, anyone can feel free to email me at any point. Again, we love to hear your feedback and we always take it into consideration um, for future editions or future revisions. Yeah, and I was going to say, too, before we hop on to the next question, uh, when you guys close this webinar out, there will be a quick survey. Um, and if you have any follow-up questions for either you know Bob or Dr. Mejia or any of us on the PSG team, 
uh, you can also drop them in there and we'll uh, get back to you. So the next question I have here is from uh, Gary Green. Has the improved test bank changed the quality of some of the questions, maybe utilizing Bloom's taxonomy? Many questions in the past have not been challenging and are very basic and sometimes incorrect. Hmm. Hi, this is Tiffany Slider. I'm the content manager of our strategy team for EMS. Um, I'm happy to speak to that. Appreciate all the feedback everyone's provided over the years on our test banks. I know how critical of a resource that is for you um, to bring your students up to speed and make sure they're prepared for the certification exam and for the field. So um, we, we did make some improvements this time around. We have fully um, had a team of SMEs vet and review all of the items in the current test bank, uh, make updates obviously to align with the new text. And we've also added a number of items. I, I don't know off the top of my head the number, but we've added a few hundred additional items to the test bank, uh, knowing that the more you have to choose from, the better. So I, I strongly think you'll see an improvement um, in the quality and also just the available number of questions this time around. Um, we, we didn't tag specifically to Bloom's taxonomy, but appreciate that feedback and it's certainly something that we will consider for future test banks. And uh, Tiffany, we have another test bank question here, so I might want to hang on. Um, does the test bank do a better job of formatting closer to the national registry format of written testing? So we haven't yet tackled some of the new approaches the registry's taken, such as multiple um, selection, if, if that's what the question's asking. So in that way, it does not, but we have tried to use um, similar approaches to the question stems and the answer options and the distractors that the registry uses. You know, overall, our test bank is really intended to see how students are doing um, on a day-to-day -day basis with what they're learning in the classroom. And we encourage for full preparation of the certification exam for students to use our test prep product. That is 100% written to the blueprint for the certification exam. Um, so I would encourage you to take a look at that. It's been fully updated and will um, in the very near future include some of the new registry style items. And I see that Leah is on the webinar. Leah, are you able to unmute and speak as well? Leah is um, our assessment manager for FISDAP. And she said she is not able to unmute herself. Um, uh -huh. oh, she's, she's on a plane. Sorry, everyone. I'm getting these messages in real time. So I don't know. Kathy, if you know anything or want to add anything, but I certainly would refer you to um, our FISDEP assessments, which all also help prepare students um, for the registry exam and are definitely a written and fully validated to prepare students for the exam. Oh, and one more, one more, sorry, one more late breaking from Leah. Um, we are going to be doing the new multiple response items with upcoming exams through FISDAP, so um, please be on the lookout for those. Thank you, Tiffany. And uh, I see two more test bank related questions, so I'll just do both of them right now. Uh, you know, someone was asking Candy Proctor, just asking for a quick summary again of the changes to the Caroline Ninth Edition test bank. And then uh, Ray Mallory was also asking, does the test bank reference back to the text page? Yes, um, it does reference back to the text page that'll appear as a feedback to the students. So they'll be able to look back in their physical book or their ebook to see where the content came from. Um, that also is helpful when pulling analytics from the test bank. Um, I believe I already spoke to the changes that we made, but if there are any other specific questions, please let me know. We'll also be sure to um, make sure that all of our marketing materials that are shared with everyone on this webinar include some more specifics for our test bank, including the additional number of ad, um, items that we've added and any other details that yep. um, we think would be helpful. Awesome. Thanks, Tiffany. Uh, I have a question here from Bill Toon. Do you reference the national model EMS clinical guidelines? They, we, we had that handy and that was um, one of the guiding documents that we would refer to as we were going through the book. Um, 
it's not word for word, but um, often we would draw from the document too. Awesome, thanks, Bob. Um, had a question from Joel Abraham. Will there be a way to export test prep questions? That is a technology question that I, I don't believe I can answer right now, but we can certainly um, look into that and get back to you. Yeah, so Joel, if you're on, uh, put that question in the uh, survey follow-up and we'll try to get back to you on that so none of us forget about it. Um, question from Mark Martinez. Will the current users of the eighth edition see the updates to the current test bank? Um, so I believe what you're asking is if you're currently in the eighth edition course and an open course, will you see new items um, or revised items appear in that eighth edition test bank? No, um, only in, in new course access. And then I have a question here from Gary Green. It looks like about FISDAP. Has the issues with FISDAP that occurred several years ago regarding lost data been rectified? That was a huge issue when it occurred during my class. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to toss that one to Kathy. Kathy, can you speak to that? Can you repeat that again, please? Yeah, Has, have the issues with FISDAP that occurred several years ago regarding lost data been rectified? That was a huge issue when it occurred during my class. Well, we're rolling out a completely new um, rebuild on FISDAP. So our competency tracker, we're also looking at scheduler. So I don't know if I can speak to the lost data that you had or that issue, but understand that um, we are investing and getting ready to any day now roll out the new competency tracker. So if you'd like some more information on that, um, we will share um, and more information to you if you want to send us, put that in your um, survey. And then we are also going to be sending out additional information about this. If you're going to be at um, Nancy, we're going to have a user meeting there, and we also had one at a credit con if you were able to attend that. Got it. Um, I have a question from Mark Tuttle. Sorry if I missed the date. What will the rollout, de rollout date be for the ninth edition? Uh, Laura, Tiffany, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it can be purchased now, right? Yeah, that's that's correct. You can purchase now. Um, the Premier course will be available on August 19th, and the Flip Classroom will be available, I believe the date is August 25th. Got it. So Advantage and Essential now, Premier and Flipped later this month. Yeah, those are, those are ready now, but you can certainly um, purchase your copies now. Um, by the time you have them, the, the Premier and Flipped Classroom should be ready to go. Got it. I um, have a question from Candy Proctor. What date do you plan to decommission the purchase of the 8th edition? I would suggest working directly with your sales rep. They'll be able to um, help you provide with the materials that you need uh, to transition to the 9th edition. Yep. And then a question from Rose Brown. Will slides be shared with attendees? Um, yes, Rose, we will. When we send out the follow-up email, hopefully tomorrow, um, it'll include the slides. We'll also try to include a, a recording of the webinar itself, um, possibly with some dead air trimmed out and all that. But look, be on the lookout. That should be coming hopefully tomorrow or Friday at the latest. And then uh, have another question from Brandon Burgess. FISDAP updates done by the end of August as well. Yes. The um, competency tracker will be rolling out at the end of August. Cool. So that's all I see in the questions box right now. If anyone wants to ask a question, you can unmute yourself or you can type it in the box if you prefer. So if I can, I, I just I want to make an interesting observation. You know, uh, I started working uh, with the previous edition and I and I pulled up the old video from that webinar and that one went 43 minutes and uh, we're at 43 minutes with this one too so we're consistent <laughs> yeah 
one last chance if anyone wants to speak up with any questions or put them in the box. Uh, consider this last call, I guess. Well, I I would just say thank you very much for everyone who's attended this and uh, certainly uh, maybe we'll see you at a conference or something and uh, see, you or, see you in the streets. Yep. All right, so I think we'll call it a day then. Um, so like I said to everyone, when you close this webinar out, you'll there'll be a quick survey if you could just fill that out. Um, you can also drop in any follow-up questions, uh, particularly ones we weren't able to answer on the webinar, and we'll try to get back to you. But thanks to uh, Bob, thanks to Dr. Mejia, and thanks to uh, everybody for attending, and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.